Hi there, I'm Jay Cosgathorpe and welcome to the Infogol Betting Podcast. Uh, we're just having a little laugh off camera, Liam saying that he's uh, now an avid fan of Macedonian football, having watched them in the international break. Liam, care to comment? I was just defending the international break. It's nice to sort of reflect. I mean, we've all done it. We've all written articles reflecting on the start of the season, looking back and like I was saying, it's not just England that's that's playing seemingly meaningless games. Scotland and Macedonia have had massive, massive games and big and emotional swings in them. So it was in defence of the international break more than anything. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's good to be back there. Premier League duty as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, the the other team that won quite dramatically was Hungary. I think they scored twice, didn't they, in the last couple of minutes of their match to to qualify for the Euros. So there were some highlights from a. Um, you know, a football team perspective, but personally, I, I didn't want to watch too much international football. Just a little break and a recharge, and like you said, just reflect almost on what we've seen so far in the Premier League. And Stephen, you would have been reflecting had you not taken a little little holiday. Of course, I couldn't really go far though. You know, around the block a few times, had a little sabbatical. Just looking forward to get my teeth stuck into the football coming up. I've actually missed it. Take it for granted. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, we, we now have the bonus as well coming back in um, for game week nine of the Premier League that there's no more pay-per-view games. So every game that is available to watch live on television, which is excellent news. Liam, just swing it quickly to you. Anything that you've seen over the first um, eight matches of the Premier League season? Any trends that have caught your eye? Um, anything that you, you're going to be looking out for um, as the season progresses? I think just looking over uh, strength of schedule stuff that's been coming up. So... We've got Tottenham and Chelsea have had the easiest run of things at the start of the season, whereas someone like Sheffield United and or Chris Wilder is under a bit of pressure. But I don't, I don't see why he should be. He should have enough good grace there to, to get through a difficult time. They've, they've had one of the hardest starts of the season, and just it's interesting looking at, like I said, Tottenham have had the easiest start, but the upcoming schedule's really difficult. I mean, by our forecast finishing position, they face. Uh, the first, second, third and fifth players teamed in the next six games. So so them and them and Fulham are at the bottom of that list. So it'd be really interesting to see see what comes of that really. Yeah, I think the the Fulham one in particular is is um is eye catching for the fact that they've picked up four points so far, but they've only wins it's come against West Brom, who are probably the only team that are actually worse than them. So uh, I think you made a good case in the article for a couple of managers to, to be backed in that market. I looked at some Premier League trends um, in, in one of my articles and obviously touched on the Spurs point that Liam's just made there. The fact that the title credentials are probably, well, they're going to be truly tested over the next six matches. Uh, Manchester City, who they play this weekend, are, are performing at a level that is not what we come to expect from them in attack. And, and I also touched on Brighton, who've probably been one of the most unfortunate teams in the Premier League so far this season. They sit fifth in our expected goals table compared to 16th in the actual table. Um, expect them their results to pick up. Stephen, have you, have you noticed anything? More the championship, really. Obviously, I'm uh, responsible for that on a Monday, doing the championship review. And what caught my eye was uh, Ido Karanka's bad start. He's actually made his worst start in English football. Um, Birmingham have struggled a bit for them 11 games. So that's one to keep an eye on if you are having a dabble in the championship football, just to keep an eye on how Birmingham are doing over the next few weeks. Yeah, some interesting stuff and everything that we've, we've spoken about there, the the key trends articles, the sack race articles, are all available on infogold.net slash analysis. So go check them out before the, the weekend's football to see if there are any trends that could perhaps provide a, a betting edge this weekend. Uh, so we'll head into the, the first section of, of our betting show, which is the, the naps. Um, I'll start us off. I think that me and Liam are very much in agreement with, with our naps this weekend. Um, and that is Manchester United to win to nil. They're hosting West Brom at Old Trafford. Liam, I'll let you um, get started with this one. So priced at two point one. Yeah, I'll just I'll run through some quick stats and let you make a comment on it as well. But I think Man United's improvement in defence has been a little overlooked over the last few games. I mean, since the six-one defeat against Tottenham uh, just before the October international break, have allowed just. 0.81 xGA per game, albeit with the that howler against uh, Istanbul Basaksehir here, but even more so, like on the other side of the coin, West Brom's attack. We've spoke about it in a few articles over the last 
couple of weeks. I mean, they're they're on course to be the worst that we've ever seen at Infogol, and possibly one of the worst in Premier League history. I would imagine like zero point six xGF per game. They're averaging two non penalty big chances that they've created, along with being the worst in that category for non penalty big chances allowed. They're allowing one point nine eight xGF per game as well. It's all of the numbers point to Man United to win to nil. And I was quite surprised to see it at anything above evens. And I will be happily back in that this weekend. Yeah, I'll be joining you on that. I just think the same as what you said there, the, the price is, is baffling to me. And I think that the, the defensive improvement that United have made is sort of, it's not really, it's, it's gone under the radar effectively just because they have been conceding goals, but those goals have been coming from low probability chances that aren't necessarily going to go in week, and, week in and week out. And the numbers you quoted there with United conceding just 0.81 expected goals against per game, that includes games against PSG and RB Leipzig, two teams that, well, uh, Champions League runners up and Champions League semi finalists from last season. So two of Europeans, football's elite, have played Manchester United and haven't really made too much of a mark. So, um, Impressive stuff from them defensively. Uh, I'll be interested just to see what Solskjaer does in this game because obviously he's been operating a double pivot of Fred and McTominay that, that perhaps has contributed to that defensive improvement. Whether he needs them in this game, given West Brom's attacking woes, remains to be seen. I wouldn't be surprised if he did start with those two and then as the game progressed, just throw in a couple of extra attacking plays, try and open it up a bit. Um, yeah, I see this playing out very much, very similar to what West Brom v Tottenham was, which was... West Brom hanging tough for a while and then Spurs quality eventually prevailing. So yeah, Man United to win to nil. It looks a very big price. I think the Infocore model prices this one up at around 1.9. So you're getting a decent chunk of value there in backing Manchester United to win to nil. That's on the sports book at the moment because the exchange hasn't yet got the liquidity to price that one up. Um, Stephen, take us away with your nap. I'll just quickly say, lad, that my Beth Epi's actually out predicted 3-0 Man United. So that can be the, definitely be the podcast nap. Uh, all three of them. Um, but for my nap, my personal nap, I'm going for over 2.5 goals in Tottenham Hotspur versus Manchester City at 1.67. Now, critics, I feel, were analysing Mourinho's move to Tottenham, and including myself. I was a bit wary of it, and we weren't exactly that good last season. But I think they've been silenced this time around, and Spurs have recorded some exceptional underlying numbers. They've averaged 2.115 X goals for per game. And they've also looked solid in defence, averaging 1.22 X scores against per game. And to be fair to them, they're consistently securing strong results. And the previous game before the international break, they won the XG battle against West Brom. And it looked like the game was going to fizzle out and end in a draw. But it was a workmanlike performance and Harry Kane scored the winner. They ended up getting the win. And I think that game just shows you the progress they're making in the Mourinho. He's bringing that winning mentality that maybe they've previously lacked under under different managers. Um, As mentioned, obviously, Kane scored the winner. He's averaging 1.30 XJ per average match. And he's actually scored seven goals from 6.5 for XG this season. He's looking absolutely sensational. And I think these are the kind of games that Spurs need to win to keep Harry Kane at the club. He's made it no secret over the last few seasons that he wants to win trophies. And these are the big games. I think if he was to leave City, their opposition would be one of the only sides that could afford him. And uh, they'll obviously be worried of Kane's form heading into this. Um, but unlike Spurs, City have actually been quite shy in front of goal this season. Um, they've averaged 1.53 X goals for per game. And Jake made the point in midweek that that's actually their worst attacking process since Guardiola took over. Obviously, he's saying that contract extension, but it's clear he does need to do work at the club. There's, there's improvements to be made. Um, also, Liam mentioned as well in his midweek um, analysis that Ruben Diaz and America Laporte, their partnerships begin to blossom, to be fair. And, They've conceded just 40 non-penalty shots, totaling 0.91 XG. But I think this is going to represent quite a tough test. Spurs have been in good goal-scoring form. And look, the games between Mourinho and Guardiola, they're always intriguing tactical battles. So I'm going to side with over 2.5 goals, as mentioned, at 1.67. Yeah, I think that there's more chance of this game being high scoring this season than last season, just purely because of the the different approaches taken at Spurs and um, obviously the more attacking-minded players that they brought in. Um, just a quick interesting point on this. The last couple of meetings that Spurs and, and, and Manchester City have faced off in the Premier League last season, Tottenham won the aggregate 4-2, but the expected goals total was 6.5 to 0.4 in Manchester City's favour. So if Manchester City can perform anywhere near as dominantly as they did in that uh, in both of those matches, 
then they should win this. But I do feel it's going to be a slightly different performance from Tottenham play more on the front foot. So yeah, the overs, I think the Infocom model price is that up at, at 66% chance. So a huge chunk of value there. Um, so that, that's it for section one. We're, we're, me and Liam are both siding with Manchester United to win to nil. Steven's going with the overs um, in the Spurs versus Manchester City game. Uh, reminder that everything we talk about um, on this podcast is free, um, available to download on our app. Um, do that on the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. So you're getting all sorts of cool stuff from shot maps to in-play XG to the analyst verdicts to pre-match tips, anything that you could wish for when it comes to your football betting. Um, so go ahead and download that free app. On to section two then, and we'll take a little trip around Europe. Um, Stephen, where are you going? Uh, where are you taking us on your little trip? We've got your hand luggage ready to board <laughs> the aeroplane. Which country are we visiting? To yeah, we can only, only dream at the moment, can't we? Yeah. I think next year, hopefully, but... I'm going with an uh, Atletico Madrid win versus Barcelona at quite a big price at 3.0. Now, Atletico Madrid have won 17 points from seven games so far, and that's earned them the title as La Liga's only unbeaten side this season. And they've only actually conceded two goals, which is pretty impressive. But they actually have conceded 7.9 XG per game in total. And look, that's bound to be unsustainable long term, but it has granted them a sensational start and they've looked really good. Um, but they've also looked good going forward. Uh, they've averaged 2.12 X goals for per game. And that's actually the highest XG4 per game average since Infogo introduced La Liga data in 2014. So things are really starting to click this season. They're probably looking the best I've done in years. And part of that, I think, is Drow Felix. He's, he's looking sensational. He scored seven goals this season, um, averaging 0.70 XG per game. And that makes him the club's top goal scorer. And I really do think that Barcelona might find it difficult to contain him here. I mean, we all know they've got an age in defence, obviously, that the debacle against uh, Bayern Munich stood out last season. Gerard Piquet and Jordi Alba, they're not getting any younger. And the defensive record, which was pretty poor last season, it's actually got worse uh, this time around. It was already their Achilles heel. Um, Barcelona are averaging 1.37 X goals against per game. And to make matters worse, Ansu Fati has ruled out with this game for injury. And as Jake pointed out, um, Messi has actually only scored one non-penalty goal in the league this term. And they're going to be relying on him quite a lot. And that's quite worrying. He's also yet to register an assist. I don't know if you two saw the quotes in midweek, but there was some murmurings of discontent from Messi. He said he was sick of, quote unquote, being the problem. So I don't think the camps are happy in Barcelona at the moment. And I just can't fathom why they're the favourites yet. And I think Atletico could win this fixture for the first time in four years. And 3.0 is a, a big price. Yeah, I've I've gone from the same game actually. Um, I've taken a slightly different approach, but basically, I've just tried to get Atletico Madrid on side um, in whatever way we can. I, I, the, the loss of Luis Suarez is a little bit of a blow. Um, I don't think that Atletico Madrid will lose this game. You know, we, we this you, you wrote about in your in your article, Stephen, the fact that obviously Barcelona haven't been very good away from home in terms of underlying process. I think they've averaged just one point three expected goals against per game, which is a really poor total for um, a side that boasts some fantastic attacking talent. So I'm, I'm just happy to get Atletico Madrid on side. And um, I've gone to the Betfair same game multi on the sports book. And I've, I've gone for Atletico Madrid or the draw and under three and a half goals because I can't see this one being a, a goal fest. And, and that comes out around 1.96. So I've taken a, a bit more of a cautious uh, approach than, than your Cavalier Atletico Madrid to win with a, with a, a big price. Um, but I think that we could both be in the money with a, an Atletico Madrid 1-0 win, which is pretty much a trademark of Simeone's side. So uh, the main point being that we are, we do think that Atletico Madrid should be the favourites for this game and, and that they are in a better place than Barcelona right about now. Um, so we, we've both gone to the Wanda Metropolitano. Liam, whereabouts are you taking us? I'm going to Frankfurt in Germany and I'm looking for goals here. Uh, I bet is over 3.5 goals. It's 2.44 on the Betfair exchange. And a lot of sitting mid-table, Frankfurt, uh, I think it's between them and Hoffenheim, who is the ones you want to tune into, really. Uh, they're averaging 3.78 XG per game, just just between the teams that they're playing. So chances of both ends there. I mean, the, they are coming up against RB Leipzig this weekend, but they do average over 2 XG per game, like as an attacking force, so not really missing Timo Werner as much as people might think. I know that they're a good defensive side too. I think Frankfurt just probably caused them a bit more trouble than the most teams. I mean, Frankfurt at home are averaging 2.46 expected goals per game. So, so they're a real force to be reckoned with. 
So I'm, I'm a bit surprised to see it at that big a price, really. Like over over 3.5 goals is generally the, I'd say for the rest of the leagues, it's over two and a half goals is the is the level where markets start. Whereas in Germany, it's often over uh, three and a half goals where the line is. So so to see that bigger price, like, like I say, I'm a, a bit wary of Leipzig's excellent defence this season, but but I, I expect a big open game here and, and at 2.44, I think it's a great price. I trust him on that, Jake, just before you come in. I, Liam's becoming our German correspondent, isn't he, soon? So <laughs> about very, that. very shortly, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I couldn't agree more. I think the, there are a couple of teams in Germany that are much more cavalier and just chaotic to watch. Um, and Frankfurt are one of them. Uh, you mentioned the other one there, Hoffenheim, that, that are just completely bonkers to watch. It's just so attack-minded. Wow. Um, it's going to go out one of two ways this game. It's either going to be Frankfurt keeping it interesting by keeping up the scoring with Leipzig or Leipzig just wiping the floor with Frankfurt because they're too, uh, too gung ho. So yeah, over three and a half, that's a pretty big price, like you said, for a German German football match, 2.44. Um, so that, that finishes off uh, section two. Liam, just to round up, he's going for over three and a half in uh, Frankfurt versus Leipzig. I'm settling with um, a more cautious approach in the Atletico Madrid Barca game with Atletico or the draw and under three and a half goals. Uh, and Stephen's going full steam ahead on the Atletico Madrid train to beat Barcelona at a big price of three. On to section three now, where we look at our lays of, of the weekend. Me and Stephen are going from the same game. So Liam, we'll, we'll head to you first. Where, what, where are you going for your lay of the week? Yeah, I'm going to lay the La Liga leaders. This weekend, they're traveling, uh, Real Sociedad, they are, I should add, uh, traveling at Cadiz. And it's quite a shame that this game is behind closed doors, really. I mean, Cadiz haven't been in La Liga for a long time. And it's, I mean, that atmosphere is ridiculous there. I've been in one of their games and it's mental. So having that, having that behind them would be massive for this game. But I still fancy them to get something against Real Sociedad here. Uh, Cadiz are actually sixth in the table. It's down to the away form, surprisingly. Uh, they've been really good in defence. They've played five games, only allowed 5.9 XGA. They have had struggles creating chances uh, away from home, but the results are there. I, I just think if they translate that that back to their home form, then the price that Real Sociedad are at 1.95 is is a little too short. Um, like I mean, they they've been really good this season. The um, there's no arguments there. Uh, they sit top, of, like I said, they sit top of the league. Or it's uh, they're averaging just under two xG a game, and in defence they've allowed just seven point nine xG in nine matches. So that's really their strength. Um, the, but to be fair to Cardiff, uh, that's their strength too. And they were they were battered by Atletico Madrid, but we spoke about earlier about how much they've improved in attack. But before that, they've They've held Villarreal to 0.83 xG. There was a pretty famous win against Real Madrid away from home where they limited them to 1.32. Even against uh, someone like Bilbao, who have struggled going forward, but holding them at 0.69 isn't to be brushed under the carpet, really. So I'm just hoping that their, their defensive process sort of brings them through in this game. Obviously, everybody would be a bit worried about the, the quality of David Silva. I fully expect it to be low scoring, but I'm going to err on the side of Cadiz to get something out of this game and uh, lay a real saucy down at 1.95. Yeah, no arguments here. I think you made a pretty good case there. Like you said, if it's low scoring, then it brings the draw into play, which would see the lay bet land. And um, yeah, I, it is difficult to see Sociedad maintaining this level of process and, and form. So tough game for them. Myself and Stephen, we're both going for... Um, well, one of the games in the Premier League on Sunday at Ellen Road, Leeds taking on Arsenal. Um, we've got two slightly different angles in, but Stephen, I'll let you go first. Yeah, I'll just walk through a few few bits. I mean, I think it's fair to say Leeds have adapted to the demands of the top flight um, better than the fellow promoted sides, but I'm not sure that is more about Leeds or more about uh, the other two sides that have game at West Brom and Fulham, to be honest. Um, but the games have been entertaining, to be fair, and they've averaged 1.57 X goals for per game in conceding an average of 1.71 X goals against per game. So it's been action at both ends. I think their poor defensive record has actually been overlooked because their ability to create chances grabs attention. And they lost 4-1 to Palace before the break. And 
I think that was a bit, that scoreline was quite harsh. They conceded four goals from, <clears throat> pardon me, 1.2 XG. And look, that's quite rare. So I think that was quite unfortunate. And I think Leeds game against Manchester City could offer clues as to how this one will develop. Obviously, Arteta was a disciple of uh, Guardiola. Um, Arsenal also lost the, their game before the break and they lost 3-0 to Villa. That was probably another harsh scoreline. I mean, Arsenal created 1.7 XG. Villa created around 1.9. So lose to lose 3-0 was pretty unlucky. But prior to that game, Arsenal conceded the fewest amount of goals in the division and the back line has certainly improved under Arteta. But I just think this game is going to be quite low scoring and I fancy needs to get something. Like I don't, I've not been that convinced with Arsenal. So yeah, lay Arsenal at round 2.32 and I'll, I'll hand over to you, Jake. Yeah, I think I was very tempted to follow you in with the laying of Arsenal, but I'm going to go with um, a goals lay instead, which is something that we haven't done on this podcast before. But um, over two and a half, I think is just a little bit too short for this match. I know... Leeds um, catch the eye when you look down the result, recent results. They've got back-to-back 4-1s. They've got a couple of 4-3s in there. But uh, I think it's key just to look at the games that they've played against teams that adopt a, a negative back-five system, like Sheffield United, Wolves, that both finish 1-0. And Arsenal uh, play in a very similar manner to both of those. who play in fine margins. Um, I don't rate this Arsenal team that highly. Defensively, they are improving under Arteta. Our average 1.2 expected goals against per game. So I don't think Leeds will have as much joy in attack as what they have in recent weeks. But on the flip side of that, Arsenal won't threaten that much at all. I mean, they scored just nine times in eight Premier League games and a third of that goal total came in one game against Fulham, which for me is baffling and shows you just how misused this Arsenal front line is. Um, this five of those nine goals came in the first two matches of the Premier League season. So they've scored just four times in the last six league matches. Um, and that's shown by their XG total, obviously. Um, they've averaged just 1.3 expected goals for per game so far this season. So Arteta really isn't getting a tune out of his forward players. Although Leeds are vulnerable defensively, I, I don't think this Arsenal team have the creativity and the vision to to carve them open and, and create good opportunities. I think it's going to be a, a game of very fine margins. So I'm, I'm happy to take uh, to lay the over two and a half goals at around 1.7. So... Uh, 1.75 it is actually on the exchange. I'm expecting it to be a low scoring game. And rather than back in the under two and a half at 2.26, which would obviously, um, you know, reap really more profit. Um, I'm just going to lay the over two and a half and, and limit my losses just in case it does go over um, by laying at 1.75. So that, that rounds off our, our lay bets. My, myself and Stephen got in, in the Arsenal game. Arsenal's uh, being laid by Stephen, I'm laying the goals in that game, and and Liam, you're laying Real Sociedad the La Liga leaders at Cadiz. So that finishes up the podcast. A uh, reminder that everything we talk about um, are, is available on the Infogol app. Also, uh, the stuff that we discussed. If you want more detail on any of the matches, um, we, we do preview most of them on Infogol.net. So do make sure you check that out. And a reminder to download the free Infogol app.